Hello and welcome to the Neville Richards Premier League Round 6 Review, Round 7 Preview. Mark Hayes, Matt Milne uh, and a few additional props here, Matt. Yes, Hazy. We've had some big news on Premier League this week. <laughs> this weekend's uh, round of games has um, come up with a few good um, good stories, so it's been great. A bit of celebrations as well. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. I'm a bit nervous about where it go with yours truly, but... Um... No, well, we've got out the moom or the moe or whatever. I'm not really a champagne drinker, but we've got um, reason to celebrate this week. More on that in a second. All right, let's get into the matches played on Saturday. They were It was a massive round, really. There's some big news as we get later into these reviews. But let's start off with the Goblins and the Bullies. Yes, Hazy, yes. We had the Bullies take on the Goblins this week, and it was a close game with the Bullies getting over the line 207 to 204. Whoa, so good, good scores. Good scoring for the conditions on Saturday. Um, the Goblins had nine players, while the Bullies had 11, so we had a good turnout from both teams. For the Bullies, they were led superbly by Jackie Rowe and Phil Stevens, both clocked in in the morning with 37 points. Johnny Wooden returned to form after a bit of pasting in the last few videos. <laughs> he had 35. Uh, Bear All Foot 33, Manny Golfers 33, Sean Rodwell and Ross Gibb 32, those scores counted. While the Goblins got off to a hot start, Josh Kent early with 39, the ever consistent Pat Peacock 35, Steve Evans 34, Bull Thompson 34, Ian Burrell 32 and Barry Benson 30. That sort of rounded out their, um, their scores. Well, I was accosted by one of those players in the, in the car park before my round. Really? Yeah. Yeah, what wasn't happy with some of the um, information we've been spurting out in these videos? Apparently not. I think he feels aggrieved that some of his achievements have gone unrewarded. Don't tell me Cuz Stevens. May well have been. Cuz, you know why his nickname is Cuz? I don't know. Why is he nicknamed? Cuz Stevens? Because it has been known that him and Ian Flanders are cousins. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah Ex apparently sort of Phil B might do a little bit of... <laughs> Handicap manipulation as well, like the Flanders. <laughs> so I'm not sure, but yes, he's uh, Cuz Stevens now. Cuz, I like it. Well, I don't want to make a habit of buckling to this sort of uh, bullying in the in the car park, but I will congratulate you, Phil, my old high school mate. Phil, you know that? Really? Yeah, Phil and I went to high school together. He looks about 10 years older than you. <laughs> he's getting a copy of the Golf Course Guide, as is Jackie Rowe from the same match. I can't give it to people on losing teams, so... Unfortunate, a couple of players there, particularly you, Josh Ken. I'm sorry about this, but Phil and Jackie, well played. There'll be a book in the pro shop with your name on it. It's yeah, so well done there, guys. But yeah, the Goblins looked like they were nearly going to be getting over the line when Trev Thompson came in with his 34. Mm. That was way the scoring, but two of the latecomers in Bear All Foot and Manny Golfus came in signing for 33 points, and that was sort of just enough to get them over the line. But we have a regular occurrence occurring on our golf course. And it's it? the Port Arlington Triangle. The Triangle? You, you mentioned The Triangle. Event. I'm trying to think of a name for it for 16, 17, 18. And it mm. does have a bit of a triangle loop. But for the Goblins, Steve Evans, 34 points, finished one point wipe. Ian Burrell finished one point wipe. He's also for the this Goblins. Is 17, 18. That, yeah, 17, 18. I've done those. Okay. Barry Benson. He finished on hole seven, eight, nine, but we'll just keep going with the scenario here. One point on the last three holes. Goblins lose by three points. Those players have done that. Oh. While Sean Rodwell for the Bullies, he finished, we'll go back to the 15th hole. Wipe, one, one, one. Oh, Lucky enough that they were able to get over the line though, the Bullies. Yes, it does make a big difference. Um, geez, we've got some interlopers into the, uh, the filming area here. Yeah, since, we have. Uh, we've got a bit of interruptions going on here. But anyway, we'll just get back to our business. Uh, so the second match for review, Matty, is the... Well, it's a big match between the Tornadoes and the Warriors. Yeah, so the Tornadoes actually pumped the Warriors, really. It was 212 to 188. The Warriors were severely undermanned. They only had six players. Yeah, turn up, so obviously hurts. all those six count, while the Tornadoes had ten. Uh, the Tornadoes actually our Callaway golf ball winners this week with a score of 212, so congratulations to them. Those balls can be collected from the pro shop, but getting into the scorers, my man Bernie Reid, 38, my man Steve Bond, 38, Alan Kerry hit the <laughs> scoreboard with 36, Cole Isbell, 35, Norma Vogel, 33, and the ever-consistent Flea Pollock on 32. While the Warriors had Skeeter return with a 36, 
Pete DeFazio, 36, Ian Lachlan, 34, Rod Allen, 30, Gary Haywood, 26, and Brian Bell, 26. So you can see there the Warriors just didn't have enough players on the park to, yeah. to compete. They were severely undermanned, difficult to win, but they did put a good showing in with those top three players. Yeah. But the Tornadoes just blew them away. I like what you did there. Did you? Yeah. Sharp Tornadoes. Yeah. Like that? Yeah. yeah. No, I've sharp. been working on that all weekend. Yeah. <laughs> so I do want to, uh, even though he blew me out of the knockout, that's a good goal from Stephen Bond. He's going to get one of these books as well. So We will get to a bit of Stephen Bond. So I don't know if that's a bit premature, Mark, giving him an award for what he's done. Oh, well, I'll give you this on uh, probation. We yeah. Might, we'll see. I'll give it to you and we'll see what well, happens. You, you, you just wait for the next two minutes and we'll see. But the Warriors, okay. they had some legitimate reasons for their players not turning up. Um, we had one, our player focus on the Rickometer last week, Tim Benham, actually came to the pro shop to inform me that he had to withdraw to a back injury. Been struggling with it the last week or so, went to the range Friday afternoon, hit some balls, couldn't get through, so didn't want to be a softy and cancel online, come and owned up to it in the pro shop, so appreciate that Timmy, but you are still in the Rickometer player there but um, while we look at players who struggle to finish their rounds again our little triangle Bernie Reed 38 points wiped the last hole Stephen Bond 31 points after 12 after 12 and then would go one what? one wipe one two two for 38 Maybe he was thinking about winning the Travis Matthew polo, or Ooh. maybe it was a time that his horse was winning at Randwick on Saturday. He might have been too excited and lost focus there, but had a great game going. But on the opposite end of the spectrum, Collies Bell, maybe he's found the secret for the triangle. Was his nemesis, but on Saturday finished 2-3-3 three, three wow. points on those. So yes. maybe they need to speak to Col on how to harness hole 16, 17, 18. Look, I'm going to keep going with Steve. I will give you the book just based on the two points on each of the last two holes. If you'd really folded up shop, I, I wouldn't have done it. All right. Well done, Bondi. Well done. Good, good job. Very good. Third match, uh, Matthew, is the hookers and these, well, the woeful peakers. Oh, you can't say woeful. Come well, on. How many, how many matches do you have to play before a win, before I... Peakers are zero and six. Zero and six. They're gone. Lost by a point. Oh! Would you believe it? One point. The champagne bottles aren't for the peakers, no, though. No. Hookers, 193. Peakers, 192. Wow. Peakers had 10 players, but the hookers, great effort. They only had seven. So good job by them. Seven players. Seven players. For the peakers, Mike Kerry, 35. Marion Keskinen, 32. Tickle My Duda, Wilson, 32. Ken Ladder, 32, Lloyd Shepherd, 32, Lynn Kirby, Rob Stigglebauer, and Dave Milner, 29, counted. While for the hookers, Stewie Anderson had 36, Daniel Hopgood, 34, Neil Keskinen, 32, Paddy Kennedy, 32, Ian Francis, 31, and the champagne. Here We're going to pop the moe, Chris James. Beauty. He gets on the scoreboard for the first time in 20 rounds. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason he got on was because I only had seven players, and guess who didn't score for the hookers? Who didn't score? Choco Royal. <laughs> she had 26. <laughs> That's a disgrace, Angela. Letting Chris beat you. <laughs> but no, nah, good on you, Chris. Oh, we're proud of you. Great effort coming back from Adelaide and yeah, slagging with a little 28 points to uh, help your team over the line. It's not exactly sort of flying onto the podium, is it? No, it's not. It was just by lack of players, but. Yeah, it's, it's been there. The, but well done. It was. The, the, the hookers were in control all game. Like early on with Hoppy and uh, Stu Balls Anderson putting in good scores with Patty Kate Kennedy. And then, but Mike Kerry nearly stole it for the Peakers. Last group in, scored 31 to fall one point short and wiped the 17th. Oh, in the triangle. Yeah, they did. As I said, Geldof, James... 28 points, finished, wipe, one, wipe. Ooh. But the main player of concern we are really worried about, yes. and we have sent out some mental health welfare checks on this player, <laughs> is Ian Francis. Yeah. We're really concerned, Ian. 26 points after 10 I did, holes. I did see his chest was up. I saw him after 10. Mm. His chest was out. And then he did a Jen Edmondson. <laughs> 
He went wipe one two. Oh no. Wipe 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 one one oh. to thirty one. Oh, Ian. Hmm. Wow, we. And the ladies aren't off scot free either. Marion Keskinen finished wipe two wipe for the Peakers. Lynn Kirby wipe and one. Did that cost Peakers victory? Not sure, Hazy. I'm not sure with the triangle. And we also had the poor efforts of McMuffin, finished with three ones. Yarny, 26. Flanders, 27. Like, wow. seriously, what's going on with the Peakers? Uh, well, the I team of strong players, and they're just not gelling. Oh, and six, man. Mm. So the two Yarnies managed 53 between them. Correct. Wow. Not going to get it cut like that. <laughs> Oh, and that brings us to, well, it's probably, was billed as, anyhow, the, the game of the season so far. The top of the table clash between the Crusaders and the Pirates who just, you know, they look ominous, don't they? Surely. Your, your team, Hazy. Your team, Mark. Yeah, the Crusaders absolutely pummeled the Pirates. Go, oh, you Crusaders. They threw them straight off the plank there. Crusaders 206 to the Pirates 174. Oh. It was an absolute spanking. Both teams had 10 players play, but do you realise, Hazy, this is the first loss for the Pirates since round 12 last year, yeah, when they lost to the Bullies. So their last nine games, they've had seven wins and two draws. Wow. Maybe the loss they had to have. No. I'm not sure. You don't uh, buy that? I don't buy that. I, you know, they, they've just been falling over the line a lot, and I think they had this coming well and truly. And yep. If they don't lift, they're going to find a lot more of this sort of behaviour. I like it. I like his talking there, Hazy. That's great. But I'm a bit sombre with the Pirates losing. No, I'm not. It's great. <laughs> but uh, Crusaders, Johnny Rowe was the star. He wins our Travis Matthews shirt this week. 40 points for Johnny. Oh, man, Your girl, Slowburn Ibbotson, 35. <laughs> Stan Maskell, 34. Snags Finnamore, 34. Jeanette Johnson, 32. And Nipper Dodds, 31. For the Pirates, can you believe their highest score was 32 points. Wow. Gee, how the mighty have fallen. Peter Scuba Hub, 32. Yvette Pollock, 31. John Powell, 29. That big, strong Mickey McNeil, 28. Joy Francis, 27. And Johnny Cross at 27. They, they were counting scores. Mm, they were the counting scores. Oh, yeah. Oh, Never going to win, but... I tuned out. I thought you were going to the bottom. Of the oh, no, no. That was the that was the top of the Pirates. Oh, but... Yeah. Um, Yes, we, I don't even think we can analyse the Pirates because they were that dismal. But um, I suppose how their day was that Joy Francis decided to go out in sympathy with husband Ian and dump one in the water on 17. Uh, but Mark, I didn't notice didn't notice that your score wasn't counted no, this week for Jan Cogger. No, I, I probably let Jan down a little in truth. But um, I will say that my vocal talents were didn't go unrewarded on the golf course. I did sing out to a few Pirates and... Rock their boat, so to speak. Yeah, so okay. I'm, I'm happy that I might have contributed to the downfall of the. So the... yeah, so maybe they've been believing a bit of their hype, but uh, but anyway. So last week in our video, I highlighted some players here, and for the Crusaders, four players I really mentioned that needed to have an impact. John Rowe, 40 points, score counted. Nipper Dodds, 31 points, score counted. Stan Maskell, 34. Nice score counted. But then we have Cliff McCorkle. Corky, 21. What are you doing? You're in line for the PPP team. You can only survive on that first round heroics for so long. Pirates, I highlighted three players. Jerry Raviani, 26. John Crossett, 27. Ribs King, 23. <laughs> only Johnny Crossett score counted. Jay McGrath, he only had 23 come back from his little sojourn north and put in a little 23, but then come out on Monday in the comp at 39. Oh, what do you Maybe that feeling into? the pressure. Oh. Now, we did have the Pirates missing it. two of their major players in the prize-recruited Jezza prime time, <laughs> and also Darren Heaton, who uh, decided to go away over the long weekend. Um, I do have a message for both of you players. Your teammates said, I hope you really enjoyed your time away. I hope your golf was shit, you got wet, and you get a cold. <laughs> so, yeah. Were they together? No. Jez, and, no, uh, one was at Apollo Bay and one was up along the Murray, but uh -huh. yeah, but it's not looking, um, maybe creating a bit of disharmony amongst the team. Maybe. Yeah. Well, if you look at their ladder, if you look at the ladder, which we will do now, 
I think we're at the halfway point. Yep. Uh, well, not of the season, not quite, but we're of the video today. After seven rounds, uh, after six rounds rather, where are we? I've lost my mind. After six rounds, with one flogging, their percentages dip down below the hundred, Matty, which yeah. shows you just how fragile they are, the Pirates. It's been a lot of hype, bluster, you know, a lot of banter out there from a couple of people. But they just get it done. Well, they have got it done, but you know, they're just looking a little bit fragile mm -hmm. to me. I'll agree with you there, Mark. Uh, we're looking at the rest of the ladder. The Crusaders obviously take over at the top. There's a real jungle there from third down to, well, even seventh, but definitely to sixth. There's only two points separating third and sixth. And just one more game back to the hookers. So yeah, well, the hookers are really only one game out of the top four. Yeah, so true. That shows it's uh, pretty close this week or this contest this year. I know you've still got the mathematics on the peakers. They I can. They can still make it. I've got the depth there. <laughs> Not so sure myself. Anyway, let's push on to the previews, Matty. Let's start with the hookers and the tornadoes. Okay. So although the hookers are seventh on the ladder, they can. They're only one game out of the four. Just as I said before, that's how even this season is. If the Tornadoes win this week, it'll give them a bit of a break in the pack, while a hooker's loss could end their season, really, going into the break. You wouldn't want to be going in in the position that they would be if they lose, but the hookers need some players on the park. Captain Choco Royal, she's a bit filthy with her teammates. Mm. She's imploring them to turn up and play. The last two weeks we've played, they've only had six players and seven players, so mm. she's she was gutted she couldn't play last year, and now she's in and she's keen, and she just wants her teammates to to turn up and play. So for the hookers, Robbie Moorcroft, you've missed the last couple of games. You were the star early. You were the linchpin and the anchor of the team. They need you to get out early to put in some good scores. Show some leadership for the team. Even Chris James scored last week. That's how good your team's going. <laughs> Supi Collins and Billy Adams, you need to turn up too. While for the Tornadoes, we've got an issue with one of their players, Mark. 2022 All Port Arlington Team Star member, Sean Ward. You need to show something significant this week. What's happened to the sword? On Saturday, the sword had 16 points, Hazy. What about the back nine? That... Yes, that includes the back nine. You're kidding. No, and I checked your scorecard there, Sean. After four holes, you'd had seven points, so you were traveling along all right. Then the shit hit the fan. Ted, what went wrong? The oil pressure. I forgot to check the oil pressure. When Kramer hears about this, the shit's gonna hit the fan. Watch that oil temperature. What the hell's he doing up there? Striker, that plane can't land itself. It takes a pilot. You even had three points on the 17th hole, and you still only had 16 points for the 18 holes. It's a disgrace. You're a disgrace to the All Port Arlington team last year. Maybe you should hand your shirt back and you've become an embarrassment for those team members. Wow. Well, Everyone had the pride in that, and now you're just putting in those performances. I will, I will have to say that he's the prime candidate to be compared to the Rick Ometer this week. Mm, exactly. I mean, he's tracking for the PPP team and the Rick Ometer. Yeah, well, he's got the Rick Ometer sort of warning this week is, you know, even though Rick, you know, couldn't be bothered and scored another zero, um, well, well, he didn't even turn up. No, it's just, you know, it is what it is, I suppose. Yeah. But the trend on the Rickometer's invariably down. Uh, the sword is just sort of, he's down in that sort of realm. Yes, it's just bent and floppy. That's <laughs> the big strong sword that he is. But yeah, anyway, <laughs> well, we can only do what we can do. We can True. try and inspire you, Sean, but ball's in your court. Uh, so the next match we want to look at, Matty, is the, is the Warriors and those very, very wobbly Pirates. Yeah, so Warriors fourth, Pirates second. Massive implications on this one too, going into our two-week bye, which starts after this Saturday. Mm. If the Pirates lose, and then the Tornadoes win their match, the Pirates will slip to third on the ladder, Ooh. while a Warriors loss could put them out of the top four. Mm. Warriors will see some major strength returning for their team with Julie Milne, Jill Barker, Paul Kirby, um, yeah, Paul, I'm not sure if it's strength for the team, but anyway. Paul Kirby may return this week. Tim Benham, Matt Miles are back, while the Peakers should see Darren Heaton and Prime Time return. No. <laughs> I checked the timesheet this morning and... Surely they're back. Names aren't down. So I'm not sure they may be having a little week away themselves together, <laughs> seeing their teammates don't want them in there. So, <laughs> But if the Pirates have that same mindset and attitude from last week, it could cost them against this highly regarded Warriors team. Um, the Pirates... I don't know, it's a bit there, but I think for the Warriors though, 
John Leading's away as well. And I have heard a little rumour that there could be a replacement. Are you in? I'm in. I'm a warrior. You're playing against the Pirates again? Yeah. I'm going to stitch him up again. <laughs> oh, this will be fantastic. Scuba <laughs> won't talk to you ever again. That's no big deal, though, I suppose. <laughs> but, uh, but I just want to highlight one thing here, Mark. Yes. That, um, do you realise that the Pirates have a secret 13th player? Only, only 12 in a team. Who's mm. the 13? Now, I have been reliably informed that there is a certain person who sits at home on a Saturday afternoon or a Saturday looking at the scores and the leaderboards of both teams and then texts the scores of both sides to one of the players of the Pirates. Not the captain. I'm not going to divulge names, but... Yes, there is scores sent to them and then they can then relay it around the golf course to mm. how their teammates are going and how they're going. Mm. But yes, I won't mention Mrs. Scuba Hub, but anyway, that's, <laughs> I thought she'd have more better things to do on a Saturday <laughs> afternoon than looking at the golf scores anyway. Oh, Indy. <laughs> can you believe that? That's the lengths that they're going to win this. Well, it's pretty high tech. That's, that's why everyone hates the Pirates. <laughs> Uh, so now let's look at the third match. That's the Bullies, and this is make or break time for the Peakers. Yes, Bullies are sixth, Peakers eighth. Surely the Bullies go in favourites, Hazy. Definitely. After their win over the Goblins. But... Everyone goes in favourites against no, the Peakers. No, don't be like that. You're so negative on the Peakers. But the question is, can they repeat the performance? They haven't really done it much this year. They had huge contributions last week from Jackie Rowe, John Wood and Phil Stevens. Johnny and Phil aren't the most consistent golfers, but anyway, they will lose many golfers this week, but we'll welcome back Jen Edmondson. While the Peakers, surely they win this week. They've been so close. They do need to hit the scoreboard early though. They need one of their players to produce a 40. 40? I think so, 40 points. They, they're just not gelling, but they're still producing good scores. Rumor has it that Yanni was gonna um, actually have a players meeting but no one wanted to turn up, so I didn't want to listen to his Japanese rubbish that he would talk. But Yanni, as the reigning Drayton medalist, so far you've had scores of 31, 31, did not plays and 26. Gee, you need to lift. Maybe copy Andrew, he seems to be a lot stronger player than you lately. And also, McMuffin, you were third in the Drayton medalist and you thought you were the, should have been the winner this year. 31, 26, did not play. 33, 31, 26. Is it coincidental the Peakers' struggles are directly related to you two losers? <laughs> oh, the missiles are firing up here. Well, the, the strength of the team comes from the low markers, and they're the two lowest in their team, and they're putting in putrid performances. Yeah, this is true. It's very hard to argue. Uh, the last game we want to preview, Matty, is the Crusaders, the now top of the ladder Crusaders, against the high-scoring, a lot of potential goblins. Yes, first versus fifth. They, Crusaders can skip clear coming into the bye if they win this and go to 6-1, which would be a great effort for them. Both teams are our high scoring teams and have the two highest percentages. Amazing the Goblins are fifth with all this. Crusaders should be at full strength, while the Goblins will be missing two players out of their team. Not too sure whether it matters or not, because one of them is Rick Edmondson <laughs> and the other is Sheik Reynolds. Not sure what Rick is up to, but hopefully he's on the range practicing instead of at the bar, while Reynolds is He's gone to the UK to watch his horse Astrologers run Has he? in the Golden Jubilee on June 24, maybe taking in a little bit of the ashes as well. Jeez. Not sure what's more important, Ryan, the Goblins or Astro? Mm, that's pretty disappointing if you're a Goblin. Yeah, well, I hope your horse runs well anyway and has a win <laughs> and you enjoy it. But, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Both scores of teams have scored over 204 times this year. Crusaders' high scores being 221 and 215 while the Goblins have been 208 and 207, so both really high scoring. Well, uh, I think that's about it, is it, for the, yeah. in the preview department? We have, yep. Yeah. Other end of the table, Crusaders, Cliff McCorkle, Bob Thompson, your scores have only counted once. And for the Goblins, Ian, the dog groomer, Woodhouse, <laughs> and Rick Edmondson have only scored once as well, so you blokes need to lift, but Rick, you can't because you're not playing. <laughs> So Jenny's playing. Yeah, but but Rick's, Rick's not. not playing. Yeah, very interesting. I'm not sure the dynamics there, but anyway, good luck with that, Rick. There you go. Uh, that's just about it, mate. I think we should um, take time to thank our, our sponsors and just recap a few things here. Big thanks to Callaway, 
uh, for all the support they've given us, including everything you guys do down in the pro shop. Thank you very much. And the, the Travis Matthews shirt this week. Goes to Johnny Rowe with his 40 points and our Callaway weekly golf balls go to the Tornadoes with their 212. Fantastic. We can't give you the, uh, the champagne, Chris, but we do make special note, as we do of Neville Richards, um, we wouldn't be here without Neville Richards doing this nonsense. So thank you very much. And again, Chris Anya James. Chris James, Chris James the you. king of 28 points. Woohoo! Anya Jamesy.